I'm putting together the borders on a little baby quilt and I spent the morning um, sewing together this little charm pack. This is an old charm pack so you probably can't get it. It's called Big Sky. I bought it years ago and um, it's been in my stash. I also got this fabric maybe a year or two ago to go with it and um, I just simply uh, laid out a design that I liked and then um, sewed all of the little squares together. So now I'm going to sew on these um, borders. I cut three inch borders, just plain white border, and I'm pinning them on right sides together. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pin on all four of them. And then um, what I'm gonna be doing is actually making mitered borders so they will be um, meeting at a 45 which just looks like polished and pretty um, so yeah I'm sewing them down and stopping at a quarter of an inch and then you come back and then sew the uh, the pieces on that 45 degree angle um, so I'm trying to decide what I want to do for the binding and the backing. I could make another border, like have this, this three inches will be cut down to two and a half inches with the two quarter inch seams. Um, but anyways, I could do like a five inch border and make this a bit bigger baby quilt. Or I could just stop here with the white and then put on the, um, the binding afterwards when I quilt it um, that could be cute to have the white and then that <clears throat> and then whatever else I have left maybe I'll have enough to actually do the whole back out of that that's what I'm that's what I'm thinking would be nice it would be very pretty back um, kind of reversible okay so I'll uh, I'll show this to you later hello everyone welcome to crafty garden my name is Stephanie and you're joining me in the mountains of Vermont where I live with my husband and our three animals um, and uh, an addition on the way. <laughs> so um, if you haven't seen the episode before this, I think this is 73 and the last one was 72. So um, if you haven't seen episode 72, I had kind of a comeback after a, a pause and I announced some things and just shared everything that I was up to. So if you haven't seen that, you might be interested in watching that first just so you kind of get caught up um, and then um, know what's going on. So today, I am actually think, I think I'm gonna actually have a shorter video. I thought I didn't have anything to share and then I was like, oh yeah, actually I have this and I have that. So um, I have some quilting to share. I have um, a teeny bit of spinning, um, a good amount of knitting and maybe some other little extras thrown in. Um, I expect that any second now, um, I'm going to be interrupted by um, another new addition, um, which if you follow me on Instagram, you've seen a lot of. Um, we just got a new puppy, and he is napping, but he's, I heard him fussing, so it might be, um, he might start crying any second. Um, but I'm going to try and get this recorded. Uh, before I jump into my crafts, I thought I would just talk a little bit about um, myself and who I am and, I don't know, just um, say hello to new viewers, maybe let you know a little bit more about me. Um, so I have been recording videos, I think since 2000, and it was either five or six maybe. Um, I started with sewing that was, I didn't really do a lot of knitting um, at the time. I taught myself to knit when I was, I think, 16, 17. Um, but I really didn't get into knitting until I was maybe 23 or four, or something like that. Um, and then I just became obsessed. But yeah, I started this channel with sewing um, garments and then I got into knitting. And then I got really into spinning, taught myself how to spin. This was one of my first big projects. Um, and then, um, and I haven't worn it in such a long time, I thought it would be nice to wear it. Um, 
Okay, so I got into spinning and I've tried, I've dabbled in different things. Um, braided rugs, um, basket weaving, just all kinds of different stuff. And um, yeah, so I do a little bit of everything and um, that's part of the reason why I came up with the name Crafty Garden. Um, actually, that I came up with that for a blog that um, I really didn't do anything with. I ended up like soon after that creating this channel. Um, so um, yeah, just because I have like, I like to garden. Um, I'm not doing the best job of gardening this year, but um, I like to garden and um, also like my crafts are kind of a garden, as in like there's, you know, I've got all these different things that I'm uh, working on and sort of growing to speak, so to speak. Okay, so <laughs> um, maybe I'll mention this. This was my first big project on my spinning wheel. So I've had my spinning wheel for over three years now. <laughs> okay, so I'll talk about um, the shawl in just a sec. I've talked about it a ton before, but um, I just thought for new viewers. But <laughs> this is Rupert, and um, he is, well, I think going on nine weeks old. Um, we've had him for over a week and a half. Oh, you're going to give me kisses. Usually he just nips and bites because he's in that stage. Um, yes. Uh, so. Come here. So this is Rupert. He is, oh, full of it. Um, <laughs> he's half Labrador and half Poodle. He is a Labradoodle. Never thought I would get, don't bite me, never thought I would get a Labradoodle or any kind of Poodle mix, um, but it just worked out that way. And uh, we love him. He is for the most part, um, you know, he's a puppy, so he's a handful, but he's a really good boy. He's very sweet and affectionate, um, very playful. He wants to get down and play with my big dog, Sia, and, uh, or chase the cat. That, that's also fun. Um, I don't know if he'll go back down for a nap or not. <laughs> he did see himself in the mirror for the first time yesterday, and that was hilarious. He kept pawing and biting. Who is that? Who is that stranger? Okay, I'm going to put him down. So that's Rupert. He's my sweet little boy. Um, he's so pretty. He's a pretty boy, huh? Okay. Um, so I know um, some people think um, probably a little nuts. Don't, don't chew on my cord. You cannot chew on that. Um, all the animals are, like, sniffing around me right now. Come here, you. Come here, you. This is Tux, <laughs> and um, he's uh, 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 okay. He doesn't love the new puppy. He gets along just fine with Thea, my older Labrador, but does not does not care for the puppy. Yes, <laughs> this is going to be a huge distraction. How am I supposed to record without Daddy around to help? <sighs> He's so cute. Okay. Um, we have time right now to raise him and train him and make him, um, you know, a member of our family, um, get him potty trained, which is a struggle, but we're working on it. He has some good days. He's had some really, really good days, and then he'll kind of revert. So, needless to say, we have ordered a, uh, um, a carpet vacuum. <laughs> you know, the wet kind. Um, I figured between having a baby and having three animals, um, we'll probably get a lot of use out of it. So we went ahead and ordered um, a new pet vacuum. Um, yeah, carpet vacuum. Do you want to be in the podcast too? Because you didn't get to be on. You want to be in the podcast too? Like you can't see. I'm, wear I'm wearing shorts. Yes. This is Thea. She's going to be nine pretty soon. Um, and she has, I think, loved having Rupert. They play together uh, every day. They play uh, and fight and chase each other. And um, 
I think she just uh, enjoys having someone to play with. Can you go lay down? Go lay down. Go lay down. Go play with Rupert. Go play. So, okay, back to this. Um, I made this, and you can go back and check out my old videos if you want. Um, especially, I think it's, as a new spinner, it's fun to see other new spinners. But I'm not really in that stage anymore, so I don't have that same kind of, like, um, joy over making, like, these little triumphs that I had and learning all the little things that I was learning. Um, anyway, so this is the Holy Chevron Shawl by Stephen West. I've made two of these. Um, the first one is this one. The second one I made out of Green Mountain Spinnery yarn. And, um, and then the second one I altered the, uh, the chevrons actually. But um, this one I made out of two braids of, of um, uh, dyed roving or dyed top and mixed them together to create this. One was like pink and orange, the other one was orange and yellow, I think, and then mixed them together to create this. And I still really, really love this. I still wear it a lot and I still get compliments on it um, just from people when I'm walking around or going into different places when I used to go to different places. <laughs> okay, um, so let's see. The first thing I want to start with is sewing, so quilting really. Um, I made a baby quilt. So I talked about it last time, but my husband and I are expecting our first baby in November. And um, so I shared this fabric and kind of talked about maybe wanting to make a little quilt, but um, I thought I would do something a little more complicated and then decided I'm just gonna keep it really simple. And that would make it more doable and more likely that I'll get it done. And there's like a hundred things that I still wanna make. So I figured simple and quick would be better and then I'll get to make more things. <laughs> so this is the baby quilt. It is made with um, what are called charm packs, and that's just um, five inch squares of fabric. And I'm keeping an eye on Rupert. Rupert, stay over here. I'm sorry, there's probably gonna be a lot of that. Um, charm packs are like five inch squares, and they're pre-cut out of different um, fabrics, usually in a line. Um, and then I just arranged them in a way that I thought was cute. So in the center here, I arranged there's bear here, bears here, and then these kind of like different animals in the wilderness, and another one here, um, a plain square in the middle. There's another kind of wilderness one up here with moose and bunnies and fox, and I don't know if that's a buffalo. Um, and then down here there's another bear one, but it's so lightly colored, you can't really see it. So the colors are kind of like mint and okra, um, uh, yellow, and, or ochre, ochre? You know what I'm trying to say, like the paint color. Um, not okra, it's okra. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, and then on the back, I just used this solid fabric. This is um, birch trees and mint. Okay. Um, I'm really sorry. That's good. It's just going to keep happening. There's nothing I can do about it right now. Daddy's out uh, with his friend having fun, um, shooting his new bow. And I thought I would record but Rupert is a serious handful. Go play with your sister. <sighs> okay, so back to the baby quilt. I wanted to just talk, talk about a couple of the details. This is a really simple quilt in that um, the way that I put it together is just mostly um, some pretty basic sewing. So I just sewed all of the little squares together. 
Um, one little nice detail that I did do was mitered corners for the uh, border, for the white border. So mitered corners are where they meet at a 45 degree angle. And um, this is a little bit more challenging than just sewing rectangles. He's gonna, he's gonna nap, yay. <laughs> um, because you have to do just a couple extra little steps to make that mitered corner. Um, and there are some great tutorials out there on how to do that. And then I just did this um, border out of the birch tree fabric. So on the back, it's all this color. And then on the front, the border just pops. I think it's so sweet. Um, and it's, it's small. I could lay it down um, on the floor if I needed just a place to lay the baby. Um, I could use it on the crib. Um, not but more for decoration, I think, because um, you have to be careful about keeping blankets in the crib. But at any rate, I think it'll be cute. Or in the car seat, in the car. Um, that's it for sewing. I really want to start the um, all over, what's it called? I always want to call it like a romp, it's like a romper, but it's a, they call it a coverall. Um, I want to sew at least one of those because I think it'll get a lot of use having a fall baby. Um, so my hope is to start that as one of my next projects is to make at least one or two of those um, coverall outfits, either for sleeping or just in general. This one just snaps at the crotch, and I want to use some of those adorable fabrics that I showed you guys last time. Okay, so that was sewing, and then let's do knitting. So I have two projects to talk about for knitting, and I'm sorry I'm like so scatterbrained because he just threw me for a loop, but now he is definitely back down for his nap and not terrorizing me or the garlic that I'll show you in a minute. <laughs> and I'll explain later. Okay, so I put on a ton of work um, on this um, Cory Dell hand spun hat. So this is a Hansel hat. Um, here's the picture. I started making for myself and now is um, going to be a combo of for me and for the baby. And I finished the body and I started the border. So I am on the last leg of this project. So let's see, the center here is this beautiful light gray Cory Dale from um, Carrie of My Wool Mitten. Um, and her sheep Hilda and then the dark brown is Weezer one of her other sheep and then the more medium gray is Hilda again and so I just striped those kind of made up my own stripe pattern um, just altered the one that was already given in the pattern I finished off a little bit of the border or the uh, what do you call this pattern it's escaping my brain right now is it the old shale or something um, this lace pattern here, I finished that section off with this light gray. And then I started working on the border, but I just barely started working on it. What is going on here? Oh, okay, okay, I see. So I just barely started working on that. And I did a provisional cast on, so that's what this white thread is. Um, and then I'm doing the border in the light gray, which I showed um, the newly spun yarn that I needed to spin for it um, last time. So that's all caked up now. And I just love this hand spun. Um, it's, I think I, um, during the, the short of quarantine shutdown, everybody's you know um, 
adjusting to, to the coronavirus and what it means for our lives and everything, um, and, and being pregnant and having some periods of time where I didn't feel well. Um, I didn't do any spinning for a long time or knitting. Um, and so when I came back to it, I was looking at my, my yarn and just um, kind of admiring <laughs> my, my previous self and that, um, that I made this yarn because I think it is just some really, really, really beautiful yarn. And if you look at the original fleece, it was kind of this jumble of all of these colors. And I really, really worked hard to sort and process um, the wool into big, lovely bats that were really well blended uh, so that I got an even color. So anyways, I, I just a thought just occurred to me. I remember like picking this back up and thinking, wow, um, you know, kind of admiring it. Um, so the fact that like this, this gray pretty much comes off as one color throughout the whole thing was really hard to do or not hard time consuming, but something like I value, um, and I think is, is worth the extra effort. So yeah, there's not a lot of the border to really show off. It looks just kind of like this little gap here where I started and then they've got the provisional cast on and white with some scrap yarn. And then um, I've just barely started the border pattern, which is like a zigzag chevron around the edge. Um, so I just busted my butt working on finishing this. I think I was somewhere in here when I showed it last time. Um, finished the gray, got through the brown, did all of this light gray, and then I did the vast majority of this when, um, like that week that we brought Rupert home. He naps a lot, so when he's not napping, he's a handful, but... <laughs> And and we play with him, and we and I'm working on training him. He already knows sit um, down. He knows um, like lay down. He knows shake, and and we're working on. Oh, he knows off. If he jumps up, I say off, and he gets down. And then um, we're working on stay, which we're getting better at, <laughs> but we're learning. And I think that's it. We're also learning how to ring bells on the door to say that we want to go outside. So, um, he's doing great and we really, really love him. I'm sorry that I keep talking about him, but he's kind of like taking up all of our uh, everything right now. Like he is um, our focus every day um, and every night. <laughs> um, so yeah, he got a good um, checkup yesterday and everybody who saw him um, they came out to our car took him into the vet um, and then did everything they needed to do and then brought him back out and he must have seen three or four people um, the vet called us on the phone while we were in the car and just everybody who, who we came into contact that um, saw him like three people gushed about how sweet he is and how he's such a great puppy he has a good personality he's so friendly he just strut right through the vet's office um he's he's bold as brass i'll just say that he does not back down from our older dog he doesn't get scared and whimper and cry he runs right he'll he'll get fall down get tumbled down get knocked over jump right back up and just bulldoze right back towards her so um they play every single day it's to watch okay so I started the border but um, as soon as I like worked so hard like non-stop working on this anytime he was napping I was working on this and then this the second I got to this point of the border I was like I don't want to work on it <laughs> I'm like I want to work on this instead or I want to do that instead or I started working on the quilt um, I just maybe I needed a break from it but also um, starting the I didn't need to think about knitting this and starting this new pattern I haven't memorized it 
Um, so I need to really sit and have time to think and process and not be exhausted from from the puppy. So I'll get there. <laughs> um, so I'm hoping that um, maybe the next episode or two I will have that done. Maybe I'll get, be able to do some more episodes. I'm using a DPN to uh, knit the border. That's why I have the DPN. So um, I started a new project and this is a secret project, sort of. Um, uh, so I'm, I'll tell you what I'm making it out of and I'll tell you sort of what it's going to be but there's no name for it and I'm keeping like um, the design um, and who, yeah, who, who designed it a secret um, for now um, because it is a test knit. So I am excited to be testing my second ever test knit. Um, years ago I did one for Jennifer Steingast. That might have been two years ago or more. Um, I did one and um, yeah, so uh, I have some time right now. I have some downtime and um, I really, really love um, some of the patterns that this person has made. Um, and have, I've made some of this person's other patterns and really enjoyed them. So I jumped on the opportunity and was picked and I was just like so, so excited. So um, I happen to have, the pattern is for fingering weight yarn, and I happen to have, I think I talked about it last time, this Green Mountain Spinnery undyed, and when I bought it, it was unwashed. It had all of the, the Mills spinning oil in it. Hold on. Ugh. I make, I like lemon water. Um, I've been drinking a lot of it, mostly during the pregnancy, like before. I didn't really drink a lot of it, but I put a little bit too much lemon in this. Okay, that's really sour. Um, I get really out of breath now as I'm getting more and more further along in this pregnancy. Um, so I can get out of breath a little bit. I'm fine. I'm just needed some water. <laughs> okay, um, so I bought this at a, at a nice discount and I just looked at their website, Green Mountain Spinnery. This is basically their Lana. This is undyed Targi. It's 100% Targi. Um, I don't know that all of their Lana is 100% Targi, but this was. And um, it was on a special sale because it was, um, you know, undyed and unwashed. They didn't wash out the spinning oil. So I got a good deal on it. I got four skeins plus shipping was 60 ish dollars, I think. Um, and I just looked at their website cause they're doing this. Um, they're doing a sale on their purple yarn and the proceeds go towards, um, I don't remember what, charity they picked but um offhand but it's it's to do with the color purple and um it's for a specific charity i just don't remember offhand but <clears throat> you can see that on their either their instagram or their website so if you buy any of their purple yarns the money goes towards that charity um anyways i was just looking around at um, some of their purple yarns um decided not to buy anything because i just don't need to spend money on that right now but and I had this on hand um, and I just think it's I, I have a ton of stash and it's just really I can't justify buying that um, even if it is for charity so um, I needed to yeah use up what I had so this is really really lovely cream colored and um, it is the most like squishy not not the most squishy but it's a really squishy yarn it almost feels like cotton and um i really really love it i've made a number of things out of it um so i have three skeins 
Oh, I was going to say, I looked at the purple yarn, and then like three of them would have been um, over $60 and not including shipping. So I would have to pay more than $60 plus shipping, probably 70 something for three skeins. Um, and yeah, I just wasn't willing to do that. But um, at this time, but yeah, so I've got three of these undyed skeins. The other, the fourth one I'm using for um, a crochet project that I'll mention in a little bit. So what am I making? Um, I'm making a cardigan and I have already finished two sleeves. <laughs> and if you're thinking these look really short, it's because they are. Um, I got permission to make um, shorter sleeves. So these will pull up to about here. And then there will be shoulder shaping later after I think the body is joined. So I decided to make um, make the sleeve shorter to be three quarter because I just feel like um, personally I will get more wear out of um, this style cardigan if it has three quarter length sleeves, um, especially for wearing with dresses. So yeah, that's all that um, I've done for the knitting is the two sleeves. And I did the majority of this over two days, um, really, really quickly actually, um, knit these. And then today my plan is to get the, it's a bottom up cardigan, so get the rib cast on for the body and then start the pattern on the body. It has a really, really pretty pattern. So that's all I can tell you for right now is that it's a test knit and it's going to be a cardigan. And I think this will be such a go with everything um, kind of staple. I mean, you could call it boring, but I think everybody needs like a white or a cream um, piece to throw over, um, you know, either for work or for a dress or just to have something warm to throw on. Um, they're even nice in the summer because like if you have, if you're wearing like a sleeveless top like this, um, you know, and then maybe you get a little chilly or if you're in the air conditioning or, or something like that, you need something to throw on. So <laughs> I have it in a fringe supply bag. <laughs> I'm joking. It's funny. This, um, a while back I, I bought this bag. This is, um, one of their town something bags. They're like a bigger size and this is the second one. Um, I just was in love with this plum color and finally decided to treat myself to one and it came in this dust bag <laughs> and I just saved the dust bag to use as a as a project bag. I was like woohoo free bag. <laughs> um, so yeah I, I'm so excited to uh, start the body. Okay, that's it for knitting. Um, briefly, I will mention this crochet project because I haven't put enough work on my little baby blanket, crochet baby blanket, to bother um, going into detail. But I placed an order for a couple of new colors. Look at that. For a couple of new colors. I did start one more square since last time. But I, I did the most work on the hat and then starting this new test knit and making the quilt. So, I, I don't know, I guess I've been kind of like, I guess I've been doing a lot. Um, there's all my, my little squares that I've made. Um, but yeah, I decided that I really wanted a yellow. Um, because I feel like, even though this was like a Northern Lights kit and the yellow doesn't really go with that theme. I just felt like, I don't really care if, it, if it's Northern Lights themed. Um, I just thought that the yellow really went well with these colors that I have. Like a little pop of yellow would be really pretty. Um, and then I thought I would order an orange, but I wanted more of a true orange, like this right here, like right there, more of like a, 
you know, a, a pretty typical orange. This is more peach toned than I really wanted, um, but I decided it's, I think it still goes well because I have this kind of dark cayenne kind of orange and I wanted something a little bit lighter because this leans red, um, but I, I think it'll go with these still. I think it'll still look cute with the, with these other colors, so I'm keeping it. The, on the screen, um, I bought this from Wooly, the Wooly Thistle. It did definitely look more like typical orange than this look. This looks a little more salmon, um, to be honest. So, yeah. But this yellow, I'm super happy with. Um, bright, sunshiny yellow. It's not even coming off like how bright and sunshiny it really is. Okay, so I did some spinning on an old spinning project, and so that was kind of a touch of acquisitions there, but I felt like since it went with that project, I do have a couple more acquisitions, including some like not even remotely crafty things that I'm going to chat about at the end. So I did a little bit of spinning for an old spinning project. Um, this is some wonderfully soft and squishy um, single singles or single ply yarn um, that started out as a fleece that I bought at New Hampshire Sheep and Wool Festival last spring. Um, that was I was like so sad that I couldn't go to the New Hampshire Sheep and Wool Festival this year. Um, and I won't be able to go to the Vermont Sheep and Wool Festival this year either for two reasons. One, I will be very, 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 very pregnant about to give birth. The second reason <laughs> is, um, is COVID. So anyways, I bought this um, Jacob Fleece at New Hampshire Sheep and Wool Festival and I just remember being so blown away by how silky and soft the the uh, fleece was and this was a sheep named Layla. I actually have, I don't know if it's two or three fleeces named Layla, at least two. Um, one's a Shetland and this one's a Jacob. Um, and so these are all natural colors from that Jacob fleece. It was a lilac fleece and the lilac color really just refers to this one so there's these but this is when they talk about lilac this kind of taupey brown gray color is the special shade of Jacob that that gets attention and they call it lilac and the way I spun it doesn't show off the um, uh, the coloration um, like it did in the locks. If you want to go back and watch when I got that fleece, I think all of my the videos are titled with um, what I'm talking about. So it'll probably say Jacob Fleece or it'll say New Hampshire Sheep and Wool Festival. So anyways, I put this down. Um, I wanted, my goal was to spin like a let lopi or Pluto lopi sort of yarn, like a singles yarn. And then I had this idea to knit another, um, uh, what's that cardigan called? The yellow cardigan that I made with the cardigan out of Green Mountain Spinnery um, yarn. And I think I had already spun most of this at the time. And then when I was working on that thought, oh, this might be perfect to make a um, hand spun version of that. But then Put this project down for a long time um, and then recently like cleaning up all of my wool and putting it into trash bags to put in my car because of the moths that I was seeing um, it kind of brought back out this wool and I only had like two or three more bats to spin of the white color so I was like why don't I just do this because this is thick yarn and it's really, really quick to spin. Um, it's not easy to spin. Um, 
because I am really, really good at spinning fine yarn, not so great at spinning thick yarn consistently. It's not bad, but it's not the best of my ability. So yeah, um, I thought I was going to finish these already and there's like one more bat I need to do and then I was going to cast on for that cardigan. Um, but then um, I got chosen for the test knit. So we'll see. We'll see how quickly I can get the test knit done. Um, I think I'm going to be allowed to share it um, maybe by the next episode or so. We'll see if I can like tell you more details about it. But I also really, really, really want to finish this because I think this will just be the most beautiful um, cardigan. I already love that cardigan so much. Um, I know I'll love, I'll love it if I make it. Okay, so I want to do, I'm going to do a crafting from the past and I haven't done that in ages. Um, and then I'm going to talk about some acquisitions. So um, I used to do a segment called crafting from the past and I used to try and pick something that I had made um, years ago that I had never talked about because I, I did a lot of um, different craft projects before I started my YouTube channel. Um, so, uh, but that kind of just, over time, it just was, I just didn't keep up with it. <laughs> just put it that way. Um, so I just, in the garden, I just picked some garlic and I thought it would be perfect to show you something that I made years ago um, with garlic. And this is really old and really um, dusty. It's, it's become kitchen wall art. It's, it's no longer a functional thing. It was at one point. Um, this is braided garlic that I braided myself with garlic that I grew in my garden. And I remember looking up like YouTube videos on how to braid garlic, teaching myself, and then making this. So here's the back side. You can see the braid goes all the way down here. And then it's tied off at the top. And then I have a little hook in my kitchen and I just hang this and um, it just looks pretty on the wall. I did actually take garlic bulbs off of this and cook cook with the garlic, um, but I never used all of it and then and most of it dried out. So this is all, they, it still looks really pretty, but if I was to squish this, it's mostly air. Like everything in there is dried completely up. So um, I think it just looks so pretty hanging in the kitchen. Um, so what I'm gonna do is with this, this fresh garlic that I picked, um, this is the exact same garlic. I, I don't know how to say the name, but it's something like Natuka Rose. And it's called that because this is really dirty. I don't, I don't think you can see on any of these, but the bulbs will turn kind of pink has like a pink cast to the to the paper um, so once these are dry um, or drier I don't think I want them to be totally dry I will braid them and you don't wash off the dirt um, because that can affect the storage life this is a soft neck um, garlic and this particular variety I bought this from um, and I, I like to support this Vermont seed company called uh, High Mowing Seeds. And I buy usually um, potatoes from them. I like to buy their seed packs. And I like to buy um, their garlic. And I haven't grown garlic since I grew this. And this garlic I must have grown years ago, like maybe 2005, six. I don't remember what year I planted this. Um, but I do know it's, it was a long time ago because I remember using one of these bulbs. I looked it up three years after I had grown it. So <laughs> it's quite old um, and definitely no longer good. But it some of it lasted three years and was still completely good and useful. Um, this will last, most of it will last um, more than a year, 
probably up to two years and then a few of them might last longer but these are known for being really long storing <laughs> and um, I'm just planning to make another one of those braids another one or two because I have a huge bundle of all of that um, all of this garlic I just brought over a few bulbs from from my stack that's drying oh yeah I actually brought over something else okay so I'll do acquisitions in a second so that's it for crafting from the past braided garlic um, if you garden and you've never tried it, um, I recommend trying it. It's fun and it's pretty and um, you can hang it up in your um, kitchen as a, as a pretty like decoration and it's also functional. You can cut pieces from it and cook with it. Okay, so I'm also getting dirt all over my couch. Uh, I always have dirt and dog hair and everything on my couch. It's just, we have a very lived in house. <laughs> So last time I wanted to talk about so many things that I didn't get to talk about and my video went so long that um, unfortunately I just, you know, I couldn't keep going on and on and on. But I had shared this brand new, um, and this got a little messed up, but this brand new, excuse me, Shetland fleece that I purchased. Um, the name of this sheep was Ingrid, and that is not a name that you hear a lot of in the States, but it's tickling my memory, and I, I think I went to school with someone named Ingrid at some point. I just can't remember, like, was it high school? Was it middle school? Was it one of the different elementary schools that I went to? Because I, I went to a bunch of different elementary schools. I don't remember. But this is the sample that I spun raw and then washed of this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful um, dark brown. And dark brown is called Moret. I don't always bother to use the Shetland names. I just call them by their color um, because most people um, don't know the Shetland um, background. But I just really, really really wanted this color and I'm so happy to have it. It's a extremely soft um, Shetland fleece and um, I wanted to share parts of the fleece that I didn't get to talk about last time. I'm trying not to wake the puppy. I think I'm... Oh, he's going to lay back down. Okay. So the lady who sent this to me sent um, two separate bags inside of the fleece where she had divided up the bridge wool. So this is Ingrid's bridge wool. And, and the neck wool. So if you know anything about Shetlands, then you might know that the neck wool was typically used for um, making their uh, shawls and hats and things. Um, and it was picked out and was um, prized for being soft and fine. So this neck wool compared to what is already an extremely fine fleece to me. I'm doing everything to wake my puppy up. He is trying to sleep and I'm making all of this noise. <laughs> um, so this is already a very, very fine, fine wool, but this neck wool is even finer. The crimp is so fine that you can't hardly see it. Um, it's there though. Let's see if I can find a prettier, a prettier section. Sometimes neck wool can be just as dirty as the bridge wool, as the backside, um, depending on the sheep and their eating habits and things like that. Their neck can get quite filthy. This is all very, very clean. Very, very clean. It's got some, um, like, dirty, I don't know if it's poop or dirt or what. You can see it right there. It's definitely got some dirty spots, but there's not tons of hay and um, vegetable matter and, like, little bits of little chaff and stuff. Um, so it's 
it's incredibly fine, super fine crimp, and just so, 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 so soft. Um, I started to think that what would be a nice little project, since I didn't really have a big project in mind for this yet, um, and I have so many projects going on that that's maybe not a good idea, but what I could do that would be quick and simple and really lovely is make a newborn hat to bring baby home in. And so I think what I'll do is look for a newborn baby hat um, that we can bring our baby home in. And this will be way more than soft enough for a newborn. And I just think it'll be so sweet to bring the baby home and um, uh, probably a lot of handmade stuff, if I'm being honest. It's probably going to be wearing handmade outfits, handmade hats sweaters or two we'll see i really want it so we're having a november baby so i really want to make a i'm trying to remember not to like get right on top of the camera i have a bad habit of that um i really want to make like a little christmas outfit because the baby's going to be born early ish november probably um so we'll have thanksgiving and we'll have <laughs> he's playing with a box we got a new mattress and mattress pad protector, and we the mattress pad protector came in the perfect size puppy box, and I told my husband, don't throw that box out. That is a free toy. <laughs> and of course, he puts it on the back porch to be thrown out, and I went out there, and I was like, you didn't put that outside, did you? <laughs> he was like, what, what? <laughs> I was like, that is a free toy. <laughs> Um, anyway, so I'm, I think I'm going to use the neck wool, um, since it was already so nicely separated for me to make a, um, he's sniffing the bag now. I, I definitely, he would be sleeping if I wasn't talking. Um, the bridge wool is also separated. She nicely separated that, so I think what I'm going to do is look around for a newborn hat to make. And if you have any recommendations, I would, I would love to hear, um, especially those of you who do, if you do a lot of baby knitting, um, if you know, like, this is a really great pattern that works really well, then please recommend it to me. Um, I don't mind paying for patterns. I do like free patterns. Who doesn't? But um, I don't mind paying for patterns if there's a really, really good one that you think I should check out. So the rich wool is also super soft. This whole fleece is super soft. But the quality of the wool is just, it's weird, it's hard to describe it. I've got a word that's not the right word. Um, I want to say wiry. It's not. This is extremely soft. There's just, there's this quality to the bridge. It looks a certain way. Um, and all, all, all Shetland bridge wool and, and other breeds look this way. I don't know how to describe it. But this is just a soft. Like, there's really no point separating out this bridge wool other than um, the fact that it was on the back end and it might have more, like, poo in it. <laughs> it definitely... Ooh, yeah, it was a nose full. It definitely smells strong. My hands feel, like, great with lanolin. But, okay. But that would be such a quick and easy project. I think that's like a really reasonable thing for me to try and work work on. Okay. It would be like, make a little bear hat out of that brown. Wouldn't that be really cute if I could make a little bear hat or something? Um, okay. So the last thing I want to talk about is acquisitions. One is sheep, a couple are sheep related, I guess. And then um, some are just not, not even remotely crafty related. So <laughs> let's start with the, um, this from the Wooly Thistle. So I showed the yarn that I got, but I also, in that order, she was having like a sale. Um, and ooh, I don't remember if it was 10% off or what, but this is ribbon. There's the Wooly Thistle's tag. And this is ribbon by Katie Green, I believe her name is. And she makes these, she's an artist. She has, oh, um, 
I already have one of her pillows. I really, really want the other one. Maybe I can ask for that for Christmas or my birthday or something. Try and get the matching one. Because I have, there's two, and I only have the second one. There's like the A through whatever, and then that through Z. So I got the second half. <clears throat> and then um, she came out with ribbon, and now she has stamps. Her stamps, the ones that I wanted, of course, the ones with sheep and like yarn and things, sold out really quickly. But um, I would love to have one of her or two of her stamps, her new stamps. Um, but this ribbon has also been really selling out. It has all of the same sheep on here on the ribbon. And of course, this is wonderful for a cardigan, a steaked cardigan that you can sew this on the inside. And so I'm going to save this probably for a hand spun um, breed specific cardigan that I make. It might even go in my Shetland color work project. I'm keeping an eye on him because I don't know if he's playing or if I should stop and let him go potty. It's always a balance and I'm also trying to give him the opportunity to start telling me that he needs to go himself um, because he has done that a handful of times. Sometimes he does it, sometimes he doesn't. So, sorry. <laughs> my, my whole world is puppy related right now. <laughs> okay, so um, I also bought something, my very first, um, uh, uh, one of these. I, I want to um, give anybody the option to skip this part. So if you want to skip acquisitions because you don't need to buy anything, feel free. If you want to skip this because, um, yeah, I'm going to be talking about a sheep product and if, if anything besides yarn is going to upset you, then please feel free to go ahead and cut out um, so that you don't have to hear about this. Um, so I'm going to be talking about a sheep's hide. So if you don't want to hear about that, feel free to skip. Okay, back from our potty break. <laughs> I don't know who has to go pee more, him or me. Um, <laughs> so, okay, um, I'm going to talk about this hide that I got. So, my very first fleece that I purchased at was at Vermont Sheep and Wool Festival. And <laughs> it was um, a thin fleece from uh, a farm called Boondoggle Farm. So, there's Boondoggle Farm and her card. So Katie and her husband, um, so here, you should look at the back of the card. Boondoggle is a noun. Work or activity that is wasteful or pointless, but gives the appearance of having value. Verb, waste money or time on unnecessary or questionable, pro questionable projects. So that's what she named her farm. Um, and there's her card. So Katie contacted me, I don't know, months ago, asking if I would be interested in buying one of her fleeces. So not only did I buy her first fleece, but last, this past fall, I also bought, um, <laughs> I bought my first fleece, which was a fin fleece from Vermont Sheep and Wool Festival years ago. Um, and then last fall, I bought another one of her fin um, fleeces, but the, the fin fleece that I bought last year was amazing. It's already all processed, ready to spin if I just figure out what I want to make with it. And so I've never bought a hide before. Um, I've always thought about it and wanted one, but they are pricey and um, yeah, so I decided um, this time that I would buy one. And I don't remember, um, let me see. I want to look up um, something related to this. So uh, she, okay, so uh, I didn't know it at the time, but she donated uh, some of the money from the proceeds. I think $100 from every hide um, that she sold, she donated hundred dollars to um, a an organization um, that helps black farmers or um, people of color um, let me look up 
Uh, okay, hundred dollars from each sale of hides will be donated to Soul Fire Farm. Um, so if you're interested in in that, um, in what that that is, so um, and I thought that was really cool that she um, that she did that, and I had no idea when I bought the fleece that she would be donating some of the money, um, but I'm more than happy that I was able to take part and support that. Uh, so I'll show you the fleece. It's a fin, fin uh, hide. And um, I think she only has fin. So I don't think she has anything other than fin sheep. Um, and they raise the sheep for multiple purposes. So they kind of have a typical farm, a more, I don't know if traditional is the word, but they use the um, sheep in multiple ways. They make yarn, they um, sell fleeces at festivals, they make hides, they uh, sell meat, and they tr I think they try to use um, as much of the animal as possible. And that is a that is a farming practice that I really admire. I think there's something um, honorable about trying to make the most use of the animals. Um, so I, I had no problem supporting her and her, um, and her farm and just love supporting Vermont, um, Vermont farms. So this hide is, I don't know if it was a, a yearling um, sheep uh, or a lamb, but um, it is a beautiful, what's called piebald, I think is how you say it, piebald um, sheep where it has all of these different colors. So there is this dark brown, even like black, shades of gray, white, and all of these just like gorgeous speckles. Um, so I got, I got an early pick of the, of all of the different um, options that she had. She had solid white, she had, excuse me, she even had like a goat, I guess she just must have goats because she had a goat hide, a black goat hide. Um, there were solid white ones, solid dark ones, some like badger face ones that were like dark on the edges and then light through the middle. Rupert, come here. Rupert, come here. Um, but this by far was the most beautiful hide in my opinion. I mean, some of the white ones were pretty. Um, solid white but I just think like this is a stunning stunning piece so my plan is to use this as a um, as a I don't know if blankets the right word it is to put the hide on um, a new rocker that we're getting it's not a rocker it's a glider um, we ordered a really nice looking um, baby glider that looks like real furniture. It doesn't look like a typical baby glider. It looks more like something you would just normally see um, for furniture in your house. So um, I think I'm probably going to keep it in the living room. I might change my mind and put it in the nursery, but for now I think we're going to put it in the living room. And um, it's gray and I think it's going to be so pretty. Um, and I'm going to put this hide on the back of it to have as a warm place to snuggle, um, either snuggle up and craft just myself or to um, one day breastfeed and um, yeah, cuddle up with my, with my baby. Um, so I'm excited about that and I'll probably take some photos when the glider comes in and I'll have my new hide on it. Um, I really, really, really love these colors. This would have made such a fun fleece um, it's extremely soft, thin, and is so cozy. At first, my husband was like, why did you buy that? Um, and, and then he laid on it. He's like, okay, this is, this is really nice. <laughs> um, okay, so last thing I'm going to talk about is something I kind of bought um, on a whim yesterday, but not really. Um, my best friend um, in North Carolina 
Uh, she has a her own um, business. She is an esthetician, um, which in layman's terms, I like to call her a fancy spa person. <laughs> she does like facials, different treatments um, from everything from like, I don't know, gross like blackhead removal to um, ingrown toenails to just manicures and pedicures and yeah. She does a lot of different kind of spa treatments and stuff. And she's really, really good at her job. Um, <laughs> I know this because she did the world's best pedicure on me. I had never in my life had a pedicure that was more than just like cleaning your feet in the little bubble bath and then um, painting your toenails. She, well, um, when I was younger, I never had any problems with my feet. But maybe the past three or four years, I started getting bad calluses, cracking, and peeling on my heels. And <clears throat> mine were really bad. They were ugly <laughs> and so bad. Um, so she did this treatment on me um, and did like a fantastic job cleaning my feet. It was actually slightly painful, but um, she had to get down to the fresh skin. And <laughs> she used one of these. So I was at Sally's, and it might not be this exact brand. She recommended that I get the Swedish thing, I think it's called. It's a red and black, a um, little bit cheaper foot file. And I used that for like two or three years. But um, I, felt like, I feel like I need something stronger because, I don't know, maybe it's because I walk around barefoot all the time. Like if I don't have to wear shoes, I'm not wearing shoes. I'm in the garden, I'm barefoot, I'm barefoot everywhere. So... This thing is more for, um, it's a little more professional. It's got these strips that you put on. There's two sides. I think there's a harder side, a more like um, higher grit side, and then a finer side. And I remember when she did my feet years ago um, that she actually had to use two sticky peels. And she said she's never had to use two on someone before. My feet were really, really bad. So they're starting to get to be a problem again. I've got this huge crack in one of my heels that is extremely painful. So these are practical to help me fix that problem. So my plan is to have a little spa day, give myself a spa day, do some Epsom salt and some hot water, soak my feet, and then use my new foot file to um, treat myself to yeah, a little spa day. And then I got this new um, toenail or fingernail polish um, to uh, to do my toes. They're pink right now. And this color is Samurai Breaks a Nail. This is an OPI new color. So I totally treated myself yesterday and picked these up. Um, and I think it'll be cute to have that. So um, that's about it. Actually, I was going to mention this too. <laughs> Random. Sorry, just like no transfer. Just looking around. The last thing that I didn't mention, I wanted to mention last time, was this um, kit of stitch markers that I bought off Amazon. That's the packaging. And there's a bunch of different sellers that sell things like this. I liked this one because it had all the different colors. Um, and I just have been using this thing a ton. Um, I really, really like these. They're the light bulb looking stitch markers. They fit on, um, just about every needle I have except for the really huge ones. And they're great as progress keepers, as stitch markers on your needles, as any kind of marker that you need, they can do it. So. These have become my like go-to favorite stitch markers and I love that I have all the colors because it doesn't matter what color my project is I have a color that I can use for it like I can that will pop off of it so yeah that's it for today um I thought I was gonna have a quick video but I'm always so chatty yes and I woke you up didn't I huh yeah he's been getting into the um garlic for some reason. Who's that? Who's that? <laughs>
So um, that's it for today. Thank you guys for joining me. Oh, um, I am in the middle of starting a new Facebook group for the channel. And I thought, oh, you got some, got some yarn stuff. Um, I'm in the middle of starting a Facebook group for this channel. I fought Facebook groups for a while, like I just didn't get it. And I thought, I don't know, like I had Ravelry, why bother? But I'm starting to really use Facebook groups a lot more and see that they are really beneficial and useful things. So, use, useful groups. Um, especially like I joined like a, um, a cloth diapering group because I'm planning to cloth diaper and stuff like that. So um, I was thinking it might be a nice place for my subscribers to come and share what they're working on or if I wanted to host different um, alongs or things in the future that it might be a great place. I would love to um, to do like some fleece stuff. I would love to do fleece to FO stuff there because that is just like my heart. Um, when I started that fleece to FO series, I still want to get more into that, but um, oh my gosh. So if you want to check it out, I've already created it. You can look it up. It's um, crafty garden, one word and then podcast um, under Facebook groups. I created three questions that you need to answer. I haven't put any rules up yet. The picture is just a random picture of some Pluto Lope yarn right now until I get it, um, find a like better photo for the, for the, <laughs> for it. By the time you watch this, if you're not watching this right after I record it, it might have changed a bunch. So don't, uh, don't think, don't go, if you're watching this later, it's probably changed. But um, yeah, if you want to look, go ahead and look it up. Come on over. There's literally nothing on it, but you can come say hi, I guess. Um, and I'll try and figure out what I'm going to do with it because I don't know. It just seems like it would be a useful thing to do. Right, Rupert. Okay, you ready to say goodbye? You say goodbye? And then we can have some fun? Bye! <laughs> Um, <laughs> so I felt like, oh, you're a troublemaker. I felt like if we didn't get a puppy, um, another dog before, uh, the baby's born, then we, it just wouldn't happen because I'm not going to have time once the baby's born, um, with work and everything, um, that will be my priority and puppies need a lot of work. They need a lot of training. They need a lot of attention, and I just know that this is the only time that I have to um, to do this. So, and I'm my husband and I are both dog people. I don't know. I can't imagine not having a dog, and um, I don't want Thea to pass away one day and feel like you know we don't have we don't have a a dog in the house and I also want the baby to grow up with dogs um, I grew up with dogs Sorry, I grew up with dogs and I think it's great for kids to grow up with animals